Welcome back everybody to Zelda Ocarina of Time. We're in Dodongo's Cabin. I'm playing. My name's Sean. Caleb's sitting next to me just watching. Hey. Not doing anything in particular. It's been a little while. It has been. It's so nice to come back to this. I'm like a little disoriented. I'm like, okay, we're up to here. Um... So, I finally, I finally got my Ganondorf Oh, wait, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, please don't. Try, try not to die as soon as we start. Um, I got my Ganondorf Amiibo the other day. Oh yeah, added it to your Zelda collection. Yeah. Um, I think someone was asking about um, if you could put up a photo of your Zelda collection because they wanted to see it. Like yeah, can do that. Some subscribers did. Actually, what we might do like a... Um, right. What I'm going to do... Alright, I'm going to do a fun little montage for you. So, yeah. I'll cut to it now. We're about to unlock a bit of a treasure chest. Inside it sit many thousands of beautiful and fascinating objects, each with a story to tell. And it also reveals some secrets about a show that's become a bit of a national institution. Welcome to the Caleb Zelda Collection. The first item we saw of really enormous value I remember was in Barnstable in 1986. It's been in the family for quite a while. My grandfather gave it to my mother in 1930. And um, basically, it's been up in the loft most of the time. These are very collectible. Actually, one of the production teams said it was at that moment I just lit up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> I would suggest, do you think, in terms of about £10,000? Not sure quite what to say. I mean, these are little things, but they seem to be worth. Um... You've got more. What else have you got? <laughs> um, a bit flabbergasted by that. What have I got? Ah, right. Now uh, this one. Ooh. Got it. Now that is exceptionally odd, rare. Mm. It was kind of hard to take in, really, at the time. And we're back. So I hope you enjoyed that little. Little montage. montage of all my beautiful collections that I'm so proud of. <laughs> that cost an absolute fortune to build that. Like, I don't have that much. It's like, I compared to some, what some people have, it's like nothing. But it's yeah. like that costs like hundreds of dollars for all that stuff. But I don't think I'd ever ever trade it in or sell it or anything. Like, yeah, why would you? That's staying with me for life. <laughs> Especially that Majora's Mask light, oh my god. That costs like 6,000 stars on Club Nintendo. Yeah, I could not be bothered doing that. Like, I probably had more <laughs> yeah. than enough stars. I'm just like, I don't want to enter all those. Yeah, how long that took. Yeah, they're like, because, right, it's like, our Club Nintendo is so bad compared to the other ones. Like, um, the ones in like America and Europe, they get all the cool stuff. And we get so shafted. It's so bad. <laughs> I've um, never heard that expression before. Shaft it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but I don't know. It's like I think it's because it's like everything's like they're shutting down Club Nintendo to start something new. Yeah, I think hopefully they're just like you know what, we're gonna go out with a bang and just give out all the cool stuff. Yeah, that's cool. So like I never used any codes because there was nothing I ever wanted. But then it's like I don't know. It felt like fate. <laughs> like <laughs> like I've been saving up there all those for so long. And I can just afford it. Yeah, that's cool. And now they've just announced that they're also bringing out um, a re-release of the Link Between Worlds soundtrack. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I need to replay the game. It's probably one of the few Zelda games I have not replayed before. Mm. And it's a good game. Um, yeah. you know what I saw recently? What? Um, have you looked at the Nintendo eShop or lately? No. I've just got an internet number. <laughs> they have Mario Galaxy 2 and the Metroid Prime oh, trilogy. Yeah, Metroid Prime came out a while They're ago. They're both like eight bucks each. I was gonna get it, like the Metroid Metro Prime, Prime trilogy, because <laughs> I've always really wanted to go through those games. Yeah. But it's like, I, I look at like the screenshots and it looks awful. And it's like, I want to play it on like the Dolphin Simulator. Yeah. Or the emulator, sorry. Cause like, the graphics would look so good. I was just, <laughs> I don't know if I could deal with those graphics. Same with Mario Galaxy 2. Mm. There was a, a thread on NeoGAF and they were showing all these GameCube games that have been upscaled. Yeah. And Mario Galaxy looks amazing. Like, it looks like something that would be coming out on like Nintendo's next console after the Wii U. That sounds cool. I, I'll have to show you the screenshots, but oh my god, like, just seeing that those few screenshots, I just want to play the whole game. 
Oh, that was on Dolphin. I, I like, still haven't played any of the Mario games. <laughs> it doesn't look like something I'd enjoy as much as any of the others. Damn. <sighs> like, it just... It doesn't feel like it has as much of an atmosphere anymore, because the whole yeah. thing is just like little miniature worlds that you go one to another to yeah. the other. It, like, it doesn't have the same charm as yeah. um, like, Peach's Castle. Just from having a quick look at it, that's what it makes me feel like. Yeah. It's like, um, one wasn't so bad, because it had the observatory, but the observatory itself is pretty crap. Like, but two just does away with it altogether and does like the Mario 3 style map. Yeah. Which is like, ugh. So, I don't know, Mario Galaxy 1 I really enjoyed, but 2 was more of the same. But, um, I wouldn't mind going through with them again, because they, they, like, they genuinely are just good games. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> they don't have the same charm as all the other 3D Marios, but they're good games in themselves. Yeah. But, like, I still prefer, like, I imagine that that's what it would be. Or Sunshine. Like I look at it, I'm like, that doesn't look as good, but at the same time, I'm like, I should still probably play yeah. this. <coughs> They're good to play, like, it's like a one and done kind of thing. Like, Can I get a Deku stick, please? Like, I think I kind of need it. I was wondering why, because I saw the lamp lit, and I'm like, are you going to, like, go over there? <laughs> I don't have one, but, like, do these things, I don't think these things no. give it to me. Do you have any bombs? You don't need bombs to kill these guys. You throw them with a the tail and they die one shot. Oh. I'm pretty sure. In Majora's they do. Yeah, I think it was Majora's, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, yeah, so when I went to get my Ganondorf Amiibo from EB, they like, they kept saying like, no, oh, you better like, you better pre-order because they're gonna sell out. And like, I was like, no, oh, I'll just leave it till like, <coughs> like a few days before it comes out, I'm sure it'll be fine. And, um, the guy at EB was saying like, oh, like, we're, we're, we're running really low on stock for the Ganondorf, so you better pre-order. I was like, fine, like, <laughs> you can have my money, just shut up. And like, I went, when, on the day when, when I went to pick it up, there was some on the shelves, and I went to like Big W, and they had like three rows full of Ganondorf Amiibos. <laughs> it's like, you bastards, like, I know that's a thing, like, they have to, uh, it's like, yeah, it's like, you're like, judged on how many pre-orders you can get. And it's like, it's just so dumb. So that they, that's why they have to be like, oh, is there anything you want to pre-order today? It's like, have you seen my pre-order receipt? Like, <laughs> do you think I need to pre-order anything? <laughs> uh, I went to EB not long ago. Um, and what, I got Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah, I heard you bought that. Yeah, I got Kingdom Hearts 2.5 and I got, oh yeah, this, this person's going to give it to me. Um, okay. You got to Yeah, I got, I got that and I got um, Final Fantasy. The other two games I got, and well, <laughs> I think yeah, it was a Final Fantasy one. I got Final Fantasy Thirteen Part Three, and the lady at the counter when she's like serving me, she just looks at the game. She's like, "Oh, I've never heard of this game before." I just like looked at her. <laughs> I'm just like, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> Wait, what game was it? Final Fantasy. That she's never heard of. Yeah. And she works at EB. Yeah. What? <laughs> So, oh, I've never heard of this before, I was like, <laughs> really? <coughs> it's probably just made a mental block in her mind, and she doesn't want to know what that game is. Destiny is destiny. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never let that game live that down. Oh, okay. It's so dumb. Like, the amount of times that I've actually tried to get into Final Fantasy... I love Final Fantasy It just so never much. works. Like, you yeah, have no idea. They're good games, like... I don't the, know. The, the, group, the things that I can see why people complain about them, they're sort of games. Um, yeah, it was funny. I was just like, really? Never no, heard really? <laughs> and she's like, oh, so you haven't decided to pre-order anything or anything this year? I was like, nah. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> At least just hoping because I was like a level <laughs> four member, like, I'd offer to like give a pre-order. Yeah. Like, nope. <laughs> Haven't yet, haven't, no, don't plan on it. I, I can't afford to bloody pre-order anything. Oh, I, no like, I was lucky enough to get both the Fallout 4 Pip-Boy edition and the Metal Gear Solid 5 hand edition. Mm. And it's like, they are together, it's like over $300 worth of stuff. It's like the hand edition alone was $200, yeah. which is so completely not worth it in the slightest. Oh wait, no, maybe it was $300. I can't remember. Um, no, it was $250, I think. And it's just like, it's not worth it at all, because like the hand is only half size. Like Japan gets a full scale robot hand, yeah, and Australia only gets 
like yeah a little pissy half scale one so that's crap but like I was thinking like it's the last Hideo Kojima Metal Gear game ever yeah like ever I was like I can't I can't just sit back and just watch that go yeah I was just like ugh like I'm seriously really gonna miss Metal Gear like oh of course they're gonna keep going with it but it's not gonna be the same without him mm. <coughs> what, do you reckon there's gonna be anything different with now that Awada's gone Oh, wow. Like, well, apparently... It's, bit, it's pretty sad, but... Apparently, um, there was rumours that Miyamoto is next to head Nintendo. I thought you were going to say he's next on the... Like, no! <laughs> <laughs> I honestly thought it's you... It's too soon. Uh, too <laughs> soon. Like, Awada's got <laughs> Awada down, and Miyamoto next. Like, <sighs> He's the, next on the hit list. Yeah, he's going to kick the nah, bucket. Nah. That's, um, honestly, that's what it sounded like. Awada was fantastic, and like... Well, it's like while not a lot, not a lot of people agree with his business decisions. Like, <coughs> he's been there since like nearly the start of Nintendo, and he's like, he was like a programming genius. Like, have you heard all the stuff that he's done? No. Like, he was able to, when the people who made Earthbound, yeah, apparently um, their code wasn't good enough to fit on something or. I don't know, he, 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 like, apparently just coded Earthbound, like, all its code all by himself. Wow. And there was Pokemon Red and Blue, or Blue and Green, or something. Yeah. It was the ones on the Game Boy, and they needed to program in Kanto or something. Yeah. So it's like, it was like a second world in Pokemon or something. Um, Gold and Silver would have had the second world of Kanto. Yeah, they had like, it's like the next game had that world plus the original world or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, something like that. That was Gold and Silver, yeah. Yeah, so apparently um, they wanted to do that, but the Game Boy cartridge wasn't big enough. So he was able to program it so they could <coughs> fit half, like, they all the stuff that they coded, that was pretty much nearly the finished Pokemon game. Oh. He programmed it down to half its size. Wow. Yeah, so they could fit like a whole nother game on there. And do you know how much size there was on, like, Game Boy cards? Um, like, 12 they, megabytes. Yeah, something small. Like. They fit, like, it's crazy to think that Pokemon is fit on 12 megabytes. Yeah. That's nothing. It's like a two-minute song now. <laughs> then again, like, I, like, am not particularly good at programming, but I have dabbled in it a little bit for, like, my uni course and stuff. And the way it works is a way that you can do that. It's like, um... Basically, when you're writing code, uh, I guess it depends on the code as well, but generally, when you're writing code, um, the size it takes up depends on like basically how many lines you're writing and how many times you get it to loop around itself and there's things that are like, okay. um, there's programs within the program, so if you um, have some function that says if this happens, say like, if I press A here, he's gonna climb up, yeah? It's like, if something happens, like some event happens, um, it causes something else to happen and you can have that as, oh. well, that was out to get me. Where do I, where do I have to go up there? Oh, I have to pull the block out, what am I doing? I do. I know this is really mean, but I'm, I want, I'm going to go so I can go get some scissors. Cause oh. I wanna eat this sugar stick. Gosh. <laughs> I'll continue what I was saying. Yeah, you have programs within programs, basically. It's like a very basic way of saying it. Where, um... When you want something to happen in a particular time, you can have it so that it creates a program itself. So say, when this happens, all these things start running. And then once the thing's over, all those things close. So by the end of it, they don't take up any space. Are you trying to teach me programming? I'm just giving you the very, like... <laughs> I guess I've already lost track. <laughs> I don't think you could teach it like that. It's, it's not hard to understand. I'm teaching the layman's turns. So basically, if you make an event happen, like... Oh, God damn it. If you make something happen and cause the program to create its own program of that event, and then by the time it's finished, it has all the data it needs. Hey! Um, to, like... I'm trying to... There's a, there's a proper way to explain it. So, say event A happens, causes program A to start. Cause and effect? It's, um... The most I know about programming is, like, that WarioWare DIY game. 
No, right, let me just oh. teach you in layman's sense. Right, I am determined that you understand this by the end of this. Um, All right, teach me next time. Oh, good, no, let, let me finish it and then finish the episode. So let me feed, feed these. Did Can you tell me after the credits? No. Uh, I want to teach everybody. Everyone can watch it after the credits. We're out of time. Ah, oh, fine, whatever. <laughs>